To learn more about earning college credits with Study Hall, go to gostudyhall.com or click the link in the description. People have been creating art since, well, forever. Everything from prehistoric African rock paintings to the latest video game graphics, the ones that look way too realistic, can be considered art. If you've ever wandered through an art museum, you've seen some of this art on display, and chances are, you had some thoughts about it. Like, maybe you studied a painting and were in awe of its intricate details. Or you found yourself drawn to a small sculpture that made you feel inexplicably hopeful. Maybe you looked at a photograph and thought, I could do that. Or you saw a chipped ceramic cup and wondered if that was really art or just a useful object. You may have stared at a tapestry with the best of intentions and you just still didn't get it. And then you circled a statue and asked, where are its arms? Those thoughts, feelings and questions aren't just about art, though. In many ways, art museums put the human experience on display. So the questions we have about art are the same questions we have about many of the people, objects and events we experience throughout our lives, and that people have experienced throughout the course of history. And if you've ever been in an art museum and wanted to know more about who created this art, why they made it, and what the world was like when they did, you might have the makings of an art historian. Hi, I'm Vanessa Hill and welcome to Fast Guides, a study hall series that explores different college majors. In this episode, we'll be talking about art history degrees and what you can look forward to studying. Art historians are the ones who put drawings, ceramics, animations and more into context, showing how art, culture and people have developed over time. For an art historian, the how and why art gets made is only the tip of the iceberg. Art historians are also interested in how art shapes us as a people. Because just like with any other historical study, we can learn a lot about the present by studying the past. Let's look at a famous example, like Andy Warhol's Campbell Soup Cans. When the 32 paintings of cans of Campbell's Soup were first displayed in a gallery in 1962, many critics didn't get it, and they didn't like it. But the paintings later became iconic, and critics and art historians realised that these soup cans had a lot to say. From the artistic angle, we might see Warhol's work as a rejection of making art purely for art's sake. While many artists before that showed off their craft with intricate, serious brushstrokes, Warhol's cans literally appear mass-produced. From the anthropological angle, we might say that putting a grocery store item on canvas speaks to the rabid consumerism of 1960s American culture. From the historical angle, we might see the American soup cans as a symbol of America's growing dominance on the world stage in the aftermath of World War II. Then, art historians also question and analysed how painting has influenced society, consumerism and the way we view art. And for the 32 paintings of Cairns, you'll likely get 32 different answers. Or more. But to get to any of those answers, you need a background in many different areas, from anthropology to history to religion to politics. Which is why art history is sometimes called a liberal art subject. That's a fancy way of saying you'll study several different fields as part of the major. And you'll get a great tour of campus as you run from the history department to the religious studies department. That also means it's difficult to be specific about art history degrees. They include so much, and different colleges do art history differently. In some cases, the major is built into the art department, which also includes majors like studio art. Or you might see the art history major combined with something like museum studies. This is because a traditional career for art historians involves working in the same spaces as the art itself, which tends to be museums. Starting out, you'll likely be in several introductory classes to get a foundational knowledge of art history. You'll learn broad concepts over large swaths of history, cultures and art styles. These courses may require quite a bit of writing. You're learning skills in critical thinking and communication, so your assignments and exams will likely include papers asking you to make connections across different fields, pulling in what you learned from an anthropology or gender studies course, for example. As you advance in your studies, you'll probably find a specific niche of art history that is your passion. 
Maybe it's pre-Raphaelite masters or Chinese contemporary art. At that point, this concentration may become the focus of your studies, and you'll take courses focusing on more specific regions or periods of history. Along the way, you may also find yourself in at least one studio course. A studio course is one where you become the artist. You'll be learning the fundamentals of technique in a given medium, such as drawing or sculpture. Think of this as the art historian's equivalent of a lab. The only way you can truly understand what's going on behind the painting is by giving painting a go yourself. And in addition to making the art, you might also take a class devoted to preserving art. Finally, some schools may include a study abroad program or language requirements, so you can get first-hand experience seeing some of history's most iconic pieces of art around the world and be better equipped to study the art of a particular culture or area of the world in context. So art history is ideal for those who just love art or love to travel or who want a greater cultural appreciation for the world around them. If you're interested in a wide variety of subjects and analysing how different ideas, objects and events work together and inform one another, you'll fit right into an art history program. Art history might also be right for you if you love visual art but don't necessarily love making it, or feel that your artistic eye is better suited for studying art rather than expressing yourself through it. Similarly, if you love of history but are more interested in, say, cultural history rather than political or military history, art history might be a good way to focus your interests. And if you're interested in being on the front lines in the fight to preserve priceless artefacts from the past, this is the field for you. Similar to an archaeologist, or maybe even alongside an archaeologist, you'll be able to provide context as to why an ancient piece of pottery actually holds the keys to understanding how humanity once lived and where we've gone since. Not only that, but you'll be able to help make sure these artefacts are handled responsibly. It's not always rainbows and pastels, though. Things that can be a little more granite, which is to say they can get tough. First, as with any interdisciplinary degree, it can often feel like a heavy, mixed-up load. You'll be studying the history of Mesopotamian cultures one second, and then off to graphic design, and finally a resource preservation course. And it's only Tuesday. It helps to stay organised. When you're taking classes all over the place, keeping your pottery separate from your Punic Wars it will help tremendously. And because art history is so broad, it may be challenging to figure out exactly what direction to take your studies and what you want to focus on. It's also not one of those fields where it's pretty obvious where it leads, like how a nursing major will most likely become a nurse. So it's important that you develop ways to effectively communicate the skills you pick up with an art history degree. Critical thinking, effective communication and interpersonal skills all translate well to any job, but it's on you to demonstrate that. Finally, art history is at an interesting moment, especially in the United States. What is considered art and who creates or owns that art has come under fire as part of ongoing disagreements about the purpose of art and the role of museums in preserving and displaying art. This can make the field a bit more confrontational than it has been in the past. Some students embrace that confrontation, but for others, it's a far cry from the peace and quiet often associated with studying art. But keep in mind that none of this is new. Your professors have gone down the very same path as you and serve as an excellent resource. You have a built-in team ready to help you. Use them. And if you decide along the way that art history isn't quite right for you, you'll have plenty of exposure to other fields of study, so you'll be able to make a smooth transition to something like history or studio art or one of the many other fields related to art history. Fortunately, there's lots you can do with an art history degree. Talking about jobs and salaries is tricky because so much can change based on a variety of factors, like where you live. But some of the most commonly recommended jobs include working in a museum or becoming an art professor. In a museum, you'll have a range of other options, including being an archivist or curator or working in marketing or education for the museum. 
If you go this route, you may earn an average of $58,000 per year. As an art professor, your salary may be around $77,000 per year on average. But keep in mind, you'll likely need an advanced degree, which means a few more years of school and tuition. You can also go beyond the classroom or museum with an art history degree. And remember, the definition of art is broad, including not just paintings and sculptures, but also architecture, photography, video game design, and on and on. Art historians have a firm grasp of all things art, which means they probably know talent when they see it. As a result, another path for art historians may be to become a talent agent, or you could become an auctioneer and help sell priceless pieces of art. There's lots and lots of different directions to take an art history degree. If you can see and demonstrate the value of your knowledge and experience, you'll be able to find a way to apply your skills in a workplace. Along with critical thinking, communication, and the ability to differentiate between Monet and Manet, being an art historian is important because they are some of the few people entrusted with some of humanity's most treasured artifacts. There's quite truly no getting back an ancient piece of jewellery that's been mishandled or lost. And losing that is like permanently deleting a piece of the human story. And the field of art history is constantly changing. As an art historian, you have the power to write and rewrite that story. You can help more people to connect with art by highlighting artists who have been underrepresented in the past and making sure the more well-known artists don't take up too much of the story. They might not always get the credit of, say, an Indiana Jones, but art historians are on the front lines of historical preservation and interpreting culture and art. And that means they're also a crucial part of understanding our present and our future. If you want to investigate more degrees before you choose a major, check out our other videos in this playlist. To find out how to earn college credit with Study Hall, go to gostudyhall.com or click on the link here or in the description. And if you want to help us out, give this video a like and a comment and let us know how you chose your degree or what you wish you'd known before you started a degree or perhaps your favourite artist. Thanks for watching.